So SmackDown was bad. Anything else is like generic. They didn't care about the brand split. They didn't care about anything they wanted to do. The only thing they wanted to do was make a feel good moment and make another mid Carter world champion. That's literally what I'm getting from SmackDown. That's also what I'm getting from WWE because I got the same. I mean, from Raw because they did the same thing. Baby Space promo. Get Lars Sullivan in there. Do a few six man tags and a generic main event and a terrible mid card building up. So Becky Lynch is now an undisputed women's champion. They just made the Usos win the tag titles. I don't know why the Hardys would come back all because Matt Hardy returned from injury. Yet the Hardys weren't in a tag match. The Usos had a crap opponent. They really did. While the B team could beat the Revival, and the Revival been a tag team champion since, I think, last year? Just unify the tag titles already. It's already rough seeing Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder holder that have no character at all other than their YouTube channel. Well, it used to be their YouTube channel, and now they're just working for WWE. And it has more character development than this entire show. So what happened on SmackDown? I'll get to that right now. Right now, Kofi Kingston's WWE Champion. Now, I understand for some of you guys, you might like, like Kofi. I, for one, love Kofi Kingston. He's the most entertaining guy. He's like the Black Rob Van Dam. He has athleticism, incredibly likable, doesn't do anything that wrong with the company. Other than Rob Van Dam, he doesn't do anything illegal. He doesn't do narcotics. He never did steroids, and he's been never caught with drugs, so that's good for Kofi. I can understand that, and if he, they want to make him a top main event player, they don't have to put the belt on him. There's been plenty of guys that's been WWE Championship threats, but never won the belt. It's You're popular when you chase it, and you could even be a notable for that. That's what happened with Shawn Michaels. He didn't win the WWE a World Championship for the WWE since 2002. Kobe Kingston, for one, is a decorated champion. The Miz is a decorated champion, and yet coming into WrestleMania, they were in as underdogs. Yeah, Kobe Kingston's like a three-time U.S. champion, five-time Intercontinental, and multi-time tag team champion, and he. He now he broke in the record for the longest reigning tag team champions, and he's dissatisfied unless he won the WWE title. That's what the storyline's telling me. Other than what happened earlier tonight, I mean, uh, on, on Tuesday? Nigga, all you did was let the new, uh, Xavier and Big E talk while you just want to play the sympathetic angle because he spent 11 years in the company means you're just entitled to just do whatever the fuck you want. All because you have longevity. That's what they're telling me. That you deserve a main event push to the top. And your match was like a mid-card. WrestleMania. It wasn't even big of a standing ovation. Kofi won. Because he's black. No, not because he's black. But still, it's just the New Day. He didn't even win it as his own person. He still came representing the New Day. And I understand the New Day were, for this current era, per se, they were, they are the most popular tag team, the most popular faction, most popular unit in the show, the most consistent, and keeping the fans interested. And even though they pandered to children a lot, and they still just, Run Kofi's little kids out there and his wife at the end. <sighs> then the bar came. Over what they did on Raw, I don't understand why they would just come and... They would just say that he was about to lose, and obviously you can understand they don't want to lose their world championship on SmackDown. That would leave... Seth Rollins a dual champion. But then they had an impromptu match on Raw that was completely pointless. So, they just issued Drew McIntyre here, 
even though the brand split should be in, should still be in effect. They couldn't even bring Laura Sullivan. That was NXT, so he's not affiliated with no brand. So I can understand why they would bring back Bron uh, Laura Sullivan after what he did to Kurt Angle. And then they just have him attack the Hardys after winning the SmackDown Tag Team Championships that the SmackDown Tag Team titles have been hot potatoed for months. Then back to the Usos, then the other tag team, then the Usos, Miz and Shane, then back to the Usos. They were like stat padding over the championships since the brand split. Why do you think Charlotte's like a 10-time women's champion? Why do you think Samoa Joe, Bobby Roode, Rey Mysterio, Jeff Hardy, Jinder Mahal were United States champion? The tag team titles... You don't remember Gallows and Anderson winning it at all. The B team won it. They don't give a fuck about the tag team titles. They have no storylines involving any of these championships except feuds. Literally, that's it. All because they beat each other up means they get a feud. So the match was scheduled. Where, by the way, where's the authority figures? You keep bringing up the McMahons, but they're like, we will schedule a six-man tag involving the New Day Mac versus McIntyre in the bar. That simple. Have authority in the damn show. The wrestlers shouldn't be running the show. The authority figure should be running the show, especially when the, just January. You fuckers said that the McMahons are running the show again. Guess what? They barely control the show. Shane McMahon never schedules a match un unless it's involving himself. The nigga had a time bullying a ring announcer other than gloating and talking shit about the Miz or threatening anybody else in the locker room after beating him on Sunday. Do you really think I give a shit about Shane McMahon bullying a ring announcer because he's not saying best in the world right when it was a tournament that he pushed himself into that he didn't even earn the opportunity to so the point of him actually winning a fucking tournament at Saudi Arabia is more important than King of the Ring? You tell me. You tell me. So that was the impromptu match. Then it was a six-man tag. There was two six-man tags. By the way, I'm, that's why I'm a bit angry. Next up, it was Aleister Black and Ricochet and Mustafa Ali. They just say Ali. Versus uh, Shinsuke Nakamura that wears the same shit that he wore on Sunday. When Rusev... And Andrade, I like saying his full name because it's actually cool to say Andrade Cien Almas. It actually seems like a prestigious luchador name. But they just made it short, shorter because somehow long names are hard. Maybe just because I'm too used to saying Yano Santo de Kumpo. But other than that, this was a forgettable six man tag that did nothing to. You know, do anything except just show off Ricochet and Alistair Black's athleticism. A few boring strikes. Rusev and Nakamura, I still don't know why they were tag team after what happened earlier in their U.S. title feud involving Lana. And then they just became a tag team. Then Randy Orton came out of nowhere, hitting RKO on Mustafa, while Rusev just got hit with a stunner. Where the fuck is Kevin Owens? Where was he in battle? He wasn't even in Andre the Giant Battle Royal, so what was the point of him even coming? on SmackDown if he wasn't going to the feud for the WWE Championship. He should be the next number one contender after McMahon said he'd get an opportunity for the WWE title or Mustafa Ali. Any of these guys I'd rather see as champions other than fucking Kofi Kingston right now. Hell, give Randy Orton a belt. Give someone else the belt other than Kofi Kingston. And all because... He's part of the New Day. Doesn't mean I don't like him. Kofi Kingston never says shit. That's why I don't like him as world champion. Kofi Kingston, over these 11 years, this is why you're not world champion material. At least a guy even allowed to chase the belt. The guy has no character. Other than his cool-ass flips, whatever he does at the Royal Rumble, even though his consistency, even though he stays cool, calm, and collected, and does everything the company tells you, that's that's a good employee. You're just not a good 
fucking charismatic guy to have around if you want to be in that big circle with the rest of these niggas. Even Ron Simmons has a way to stay stand around. He's like an enforcer. Something like that. Kofi Kingston's just one of the better high flyers on, on New Day. And then you have Kevin Owens that didn't even have a, a, a appearance. No KO Mania at the Andre the, the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. No feud with nobody. I'd rather him just feud with Randy Orton or something. If you want to make this fake-ass babyface push that I know in the middle of the year, he's just going to go right back to heel Owens. That's where he belongs. That's where he's the most likable. And that's where he's more remember, more remembered as a heel. A fat, cocky, piece of shit, hypocritical heel. And I love that about Kevin Owens. That's what made the... Even though the feud with, some, with uh, Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens suck, you can't tell me that he, the, char the, the character, the funniness, just the overall entertainment factor of Kevin Owens wasn't portrayed when he was with Jericho. Or at least his feud with, Sam, with Sami Zayn. Or when he was NXT champion feuding with John Cena. There's a lot of rememberable stuff Kevin Owens could do. But you don't want to do that. Just give him the WWE title, I swear to God. I know I'm killing all the fucking Black Panther opponents. Then the United States champion. Uh, Samoa Joe wanted to make an open challenge after squash matching Rey Mysterio after WrestleMania. Yeah, it was a three-minute match. I, I go back on my SmackDown re in my WrestleMania review and watch that. I already have something to say. I'm not trying to lose my voice late in the afternoon this time. I swear to God, I'm not. So Braun Strowman from Raw came and just came trying to maul. This doesn't even seem like an entertaining feud. First of all, if you're trying to spoil Braun Strowman coming to SmackDown to fuck around with Kevin with Samoa Joe with no border storyline, Rey Mysterio doesn't even get a rematch for the United States Championship after a short match back at Mania. All because of time restraints and nigga, we're not doing an extra US title match for 15 minutes. That shit's going for three. Just have the rematch on SmackDown. Why the fuck do you have Braun Strowman come even though the shakeup's next week? Then McIntyre comes. Is this supposed to be your way of spoiling shit? Especially with Lars Sullivan and Ricochet and Aleister Black already... Do dual shows. The fuck is the point of the brand split? So Braun Strowman comes beat the shit out of Samoa Joe. This might come into a feud involving if Braun Strowman comes to SmackDown. Like, I even give a fuck. What happened to the draft? What the fuck happened to the draft? Remember the suspense? All you have to do is just win. Just win for your respective brand, and you're able to get a draft picked by random, so it can be surprised to see who got Randy Orton goes to Raw. Randy Orton goes to SmackDown. Kofi Kingston goes to the Raw. Even when they did a uh, new colored commentators, it was a shakeup so it can give Raw and SmackDown a new different feel every year. That's the unpredictability, and that can make unique storylines or different ones. Don't you understand how much the draft did for wrestlers? And they don't do that. They just do it out of random in WWE. I understand this is Raw after Mania uh, and Raw and SmackDown after Mania. They want to do something to hype up the crowd. But the chance that you had The Undertaker show up on Raw other than just return on SmackDown, isn't that kind of stupid to you and kind of desperate to pull out sagging ratings? And then you have the XFL come out next year when you guys fucking suck at making... An interesting tale in a fucking squirrel circle that you want to return a football league that was shit because you guys don't know how a football league works. The AF's lifespan is more compelling than a goddamn Seth Rollins and Brock Lesnar feud. Next up was involving the Iconics that had, uh, a job squad tag team. And then after the Iconics beat the Brooklyn Bellas. That were just the jobber team. Just ended off the heel kick. Bang. That's it. Because 
they're they're literally the most likable and the most charis they're the, literally the most charismatic tag team out there. The the rock the Boston Sock Connection didn't even ask for a rematch on Smack on SmackDown, even though their the belts are not SmackDown strictly. They're literally Una brand, so any women can get it because they don't have a tag division involving the women. But then Paige just comes out of nowhere, the former GM of SmackDown, and then issues a fucking what is she doing? She's she's not even a manager. What have you been doing for the last five months? I mean, four months since your job of being SmackDown's GM has been completely terminated after the McMahon said they want to take control, even though the Mc, even though the GMs weren't the issue, Baron Corbin was the issue. It's WWE it's WWE's writing team is the issue, and yet Paige has been doing a decent job because. People like Paige because she's attractive. That's literally it. And they like seeing a pale girl that's getting her ass actually big and exposing cleavage and shit like that. You want to see that. And she is a authority figure. So that at least makes her a constant in trying to book matches other than to have a random contract signing. And then Vince McMahon comes to make the field bigger. You need an authority figure that's going to deal with the mid card, the lower card, and the main event when it comes necessary. So Paige just issued that there will be a new tag team. It must be Kyrie Sane and Oi Shirai from NXT. Other than that, I did not give a shit. Next up was Shane McMahon bullying a ring announcer all because he wasn't saying his victory right at, at WrestleMania all because he won a Fake ass, stupid ass trophy that could be someone's rich ass Gucci toilet doesn't mean you have the right to beat, try to beat the shit out of a ring announcer because he's saying he wasn't saying best in the world, right? And people were just chanting afterwards, CM Punk, CM Punk, afterwards because he was just shouting best in the world so much. So that was literally the entire segment. Him just dragging him down. From his tie, from the ring, all the way to near near the entrance, through the entrance ramp, to the stage, just so we can say best in the world so high, and then be like, that's, if we're building up Shane, he didn't even gloat that much that Miz come out, all because even though Miz gave Shane the superplex that caused him to get accidentally pinned in the, for a three count, no storylines on that. Because Miz has a stupid ass reality show to do, even though it's taped. So that was literally the segment. And I'm not going through this because I'm not trying to waste my own time. Next up was the Usos and the best match in the show involving the Usos versus the Hardy Boys. And I don't know why they make the title switch hands. They should have the Usos just unify the belts. Because they're literally the best part of the SmackDown for the last two, like two to three years, after turning heel and having these new characters. But then you get their asses pinned. It was a good match. I think Jey Uso tried to do a whisper and wins. There was a good missile drop kick. There was good chemistry when the Usos tried to cancel out even poetry in motion, but that still hit. Then a Swanton bomb. To finish the match. It was a pretty good match. It was really good. The parties become SmackDown Tag Team Champions. After the last time they become Tag Team Champions. was back at WrestleMania 33. From the return match. And the TLC match. That's literally it. Anything else. I don't know why you have to so lose the Tag Team titles. Next up was involving still what looks like this is going to be her first post-Mania feud. Because I don't know why Money in the Bank have to be WrestleMania, but it's usually Payback. Or Backlash. Or some other show, like Extreme Rules, that has to be after Mania. Why such a big stipulation pay-per-view like Money in the Bank? Well, you barely have much of single stars that are willing to compete come the next Money in the Bank holder. Well, you guys totally know how to book Money in the Bank winners, right? Baron Corbin. Your only potential big guy, and he already lost his 
Money in the Bank briefcase on SmackDown. On a SmackDown before SummerSlam. How much of a dick punch that has to do when Baron Corbin barely did anything bad for the company. So you have Becky Lynch feuding with Lacey Evans, even though Lacey Evans for the past several months have been just walking around and strutting on goddamn stage while barely being on a program or at least having a few squash matches to use her women's right. Because goddamn Becky Lynch is undisputed champion. That means that she is, she has immunity to finishers like the women's right. That she just got immediately got stunned and got hit on one knee. And then completely got up and just no-selled it. Like she did when she got jumped again by Lacey Evans. And then a brawl happened again. So that was particularly it. Because it just came to another segment of her just saying, I won the championship even though everybody saw what happened on Raw. And SmackDown's just a Raw recap. Still, even though the brand split, they're in the same channel. They're in the same goddamn time slot. There's nothing unique about what the fuck is on SmackDown. You don't even leave SmackDown at 9 o'clock and leave Raw at 8 because it's three fucking hours. Why not leave SmackDown at 9 o'clock? Um, it's just a stupid feud. They don't even have compelling characters. Thanks, Becky Lynch is supposed to be a rebel and Lacey Evans is supposed to be an outdated woman. I think a few should concur from the champion and the challenger, even though Lacey Evans did nothing except assault the women's champion a bit. So, do whatever. I just don't give a fuck. I don't know why you'd rush to bury Asuka. Asuka didn't even have a match. Next up was the Bar and McIntyre versus the New Day for the main event here on SmackDown. And I'm going to tell you real quick, I didn't give a fuck about this main event. I didn't. I already spoiled Lars Sullivan already came and assault the Hardy, so I don't have to go much on that. If you all thought I forgot something, you completely did not pay attention to what I said near the end. I mean, from the beginning of the damn video. That's your problem. Second of all, the New Day suck. They just came out and just celebrated for a feel-good moment. I don't know why McIntyre came. All because they're friends with Sheamus and Cesaro, and they're all fucking Euros. That's literally it. There's a drop kick, plenty of belly-to-bellies. Goddamn, Vicky Langston thought he was Scott Steiner for a bit. Xavier Woods does what he does. He just maneuvers over the ropes so we can just, and then, then just in particular hot tag. Kofi Kingston doesn't even try to get his own glory, even though he's world champion. I understand he's with the New Day, he's still a babyface, and after sell to everyone that he's still with a good, coherent unit with the New Day. But I didn't give a fuck. I just wanted some character change, like him actually showing to be strong and to beat some top guy like McIntyre that was in a feud with Roman Reigns. Or at least show that it can be in a big tag team like the Bar, even though they're two singles wrestlers that we already know, like Cesaro and Sheamus. So this six-man tag was completely worthless, except just to push the New Day still being a strong, coherent unit, and, and Kofi Kingston would have feel-good moment after winning the WWE title and forgettable match with Daniel Bryan. They didn't even return Daniel Bryan, even though he has an eco-friendly gimmick that screams mid-card consistency. That's literally it. Thanks for watching. The, the SmackDown gets a damn 4 out of 10. This was below average. I think they didn't care about the brand split. The consistency of the superstars was completely stupid. They should have had more. Where was goddamn Miz? Where was Brian? Where was most of the tag teams on SmackDown? Why isn't there more women? Feuding would why was there no Bailey and Sasha after they never got pinned for the SmackDown women's title? I mean for the Smack for the women's titles, and yet they never ask or challenge the iconics, at least attempt to challenge the iconics for a rematch on SmackDown or Raw. So I don't understand what was the point of this entire show. Just to have a feel good moment, uh because this nigga's WWE champion that I still can't wrap my head around, even though he was just a replacement. A shoot replacement, because Mustafa was injured.
Thanks for watching. This was just a bad show. I hope you all dis I don't know if you all disagree or not. Always type your stuff in the comments. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I hope you guys enjoy the video.